Every startup needs data to build better products. This isn't up for debate. What we found from working with hundreds of startups at all stages is that the tool startups use to manage their data, the startup data stack, can devolve into a mess of complexity that hinders teams instead of empowering them. In this video, I'll explain how and why the startup data stack starts like this and eventually devolves into this. We'll start with the MVP data stack. When a product is forming, the data needs and collection is straightforward. A typical pre-product market fit startup doesn't need many tools. The goal of the stack at this point is to provide quick and easy access to data like site visitors, leads, signups, product usage, and revenue. To do this, startups use website and or product analytics, a customer relationship manager or CRM, and revenue payments or subscription tracking. The tools they choose are usually just the most popular ones as they are boring technologies that have worked for many others. Complicated solutions aren't needed and teams can focus on building. After succeeding at the MVP stage, startups move on to the seed stage. Data needs increase and with that the complexity and number of tools do too. Why? Because it's less obvious how to spend your time and resources. Questions at this phase include, what features should we prioritize developing? How do we best serve our ideal customer? How do we optimize our conversion funnel? And what channels should we be advertising on? To answer these questions, you need data from a growing number of sources, including product analytics, CRM, help desk, payment processor, and more. You also begin to use more of the features of these sources, like customer engagement and session replays, generating even more data. This is where a customer data platform, or CDP, like Segment or Rudderstack comes in. CDPs make it easier to collect data from different sources and send it to destinations for use there. The goal of the stack at this stage is to use data to make better decisions about all aspects of the product. This includes feature prioritization, KPI and progress reporting, marketing, channel and ad targeting strategies, and sales forecasting and support. Moving from individual sources to a CDP makes gathering and distributing data faster, but complexity and maintenance rapidly increase. Data accuracy problems start to proliferate, although this isn't a critical issue as engineers need just enough data to know what to prioritize. After the seed stage comes the Series A stage, along with a more serious data stack. Someone like a head of data, data engineer, or backend engineer becomes responsible for the stack, and accuracy becomes a key objective. This data stack owner sees their goal as empowering engineers with data to evaluate the success of what they built. To do this, they implement the so-called modern data stack, which contains a data warehouse to store all the data and act as a single source of truth. Examples include Snowflake, BigQuery, or Redshift, an ETL pipeline to extract data from those different sources and transform it and load it into the warehouse. These include Fivetran, Integrate.io, and Airbyte. A data transformation tool to model data, clean it up, and make it usable. DBT is basically the only option for this. A business intelligence or visualization tool to get insights from the data. Examples of these are Metabase, Looker, or Hex and a potential assortment of other tools such as reverse ETL, data orchestration, and data governance. The whole stack is needed because managing and accessing individual sources becomes unsustainable. Teams need a reliable single source of truth they can trust. The problem with the modern data stack is that it often fails the people it was originally meant to serve. It creates a gap between engineers and the data that is valuable to them. They are unable to self-serve and must learn the tools or rely on the data team for insights. There are multiple reasons for this. They include the complexity of data and tools requiring specialization, data security, safety, and privacy requirements, 
and lack of knowledge of data available or how to use it. All of this slows down engineers from doing their work, blocking them from shipping new features and improvements efficiently. At Postdoc, we aren't fans of this situation. The modern data stack creates barriers to building successful products. We want to make it easy to evaluate whether products are working or not. The modern data stack creates complexity and silos that make this unnecessarily difficult. We are working to consolidate more of the stacks as startups scale, streamlining how startups gather and analyze data to keep it as close to engineers who are using it as possible. To do this, we are improving Posthog as a CDP by improving the reliability, integrations, and UX of imports and exports we already have. We are also in the early stages of building a Postdoc data warehouse. This means storing and using arbitrary data from many sources, scaling this to a user's needs and integrating with traditional data warehousing tools. By integrating more of the startup data stack, we want to empower engineers to continue to access the data, insights, and tools they need to build great products. We want to put a dent in the reign of the modern data stack and return the data to the people who use it. We think this will help us achieve our goal of more successful products in the world. That's all for this video on the startup data stack and why the modern data stack sucks. If you have any thoughts, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And to find the written version of this video and more, go to posthog.com slash blog. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.